you've watched any of the other hardness videos that I happen to have on my channel, you'll understand that they are extremely long and can be a little boring. Same would be with this one here. Uh, I actually took other parts to work to test alongside the RAS 47 parts, but then like I said, it just gets extremely long, really boring. So I cut a bunch of stuff down to where it's just the RAS 47 stuff. And it's still pretty long, plus I'm adding this stuff in here too. But on the heart, uh, Headspace video of the RAS 47, I showed the Wasser 1063 at the end of the video and said, this is the only factory rifle I have. Well, I forgot I actually do have one other because, well, it's a piece of crap. But that happens to be a Centurion or C39 V1 made by Century Arms. Now, this thing, when I got it, it didn't have a stock on it, didn't have an upper hand guard. This was extremely loose. The tang on the bottom was bent way down. The receiver was completely bulged. It would not even chamber a live round. The weapon was basically, or this firearm was basically 100% useless. So I bought it for a couple hundred bucks off my FFL because he couldn't do anything with it and he just wanted to get rid of it. So I figured make it a good test piece. Did not make a video off of it. But uh, I will put a link in the description box below where you can see how this one tested for a thread I did on the AK files. Very interesting. A lot of these parts, I don't know. I wouldn't even qualify this one as an airsoft rifle. But it does work now. But there's, yeah, this one. No. Anyway, that link will be in the description box below. You can go to the AK files and look at that and see how all these individual parts tested. I took the rifle completely apart, tested everything on Rockwell hardness scale. But anyway, Let's get back to the video because it's already going to be long and boring as it is.
Hey, you made it to the end. Told you they're long and boring. Now, there's some things that people don't understand when it comes to Rockwell hardness tests. Just because something specs the same as, say, this one that's known to be good does not mean that that one is correct. You can take two pieces of metal, tool steel or whatever, and we'll just say A2 and D2. Heat treat both of them to we'll say 60 Rockwell, which is usually what I deal with at work, 58 to 62, A2 and D2. Now, they're very similar, they heat treat pretty similar, whatever, but D2 will hold a sharp edge like a knife, which is why a lot of people will make them their blades or their knives out of D2, that holds a good sharp edge longer than most other steels. But A2, withstands impact better. Pressures and smacking stuff for like stamping dies we had at work where a piece of metal comes in there, wham, stamps out apart real quick. But uh, just because I can get both of them the same hardness does not mean that's the correct material to be used for whatever the job is calls for. And it could be this, that's what's going on with some of the century stuff right now. They're, they're making AKs, that's, that's true. They're not quite there to making one like it should be or what we think it should be. They have greatly improved as far as the V1 that you saw at the beginning to the RS-47. Of course, now I say that, but I have never tested a V2, which would be in the middle, obviously. Never had my hands on one of them to tear apart and check. But as far as the V1 I own to the RS-47, improved greatly. The barrels are excellent. The hardness, though, I don't know. The bolt and the trunnion on the RS-47 spec within a point of each other, which typically that's what you want. You want them pretty close together. That way they should wear, peen, and work together just right. But that does not mean whatever the material they're actually casting them with is correct for the job. It may not be able to withstand the impact, which is why uh, it's jacking up. Plus, I think I can tell that they have some tool geometry issues slight fitment you go this may have a little bit too much material on it and therefore when it goes or they've got a radius when they shouldn't or should or whatever and this is hitting that it's just little small things that they'll have to figure out i'm sure they will and that's why a lot of the bolt and the carrier are getting kind of jacked up could be the they're a little bit low on the hardness side plus what is that the correct material for what the job calls for and anyway, let's get to the nitride part of it. The whole rifle is nitride, and people are like, well, that makes the metal 70 Rockwell. No, it doesn't. Not even close. All it does is give the same wear resistance of a piece of metal that was heat treated and drawn back or tempered to 70 Rockwell. It will not take a 20 Rockwell piece of metal, you nitride it, and all of a sudden it's not magically 70 Rockwell. It's not going to happen because then we wouldn't need to heat treat anything. We just nitride everything. If you take two pieces of metal that are 20, not try one to 70 Rockwell hardness or surface hardness is what it truly is, take a ball ping hammer, smack the snot out of both of them, you're gonna have the same dent in both of them. You take a piece of metal that's been fully heat treated to 70 Rockwell, smack it with a ball ping hammer, and it's gonna jack your hammer up. So the nitride is only a metal treatment. It soaks into the metal, depending on what metal's being used. It can penetrate within half a thousandths to a thousandths and a half. It can go deeper, depending on the metal used, but typically it's half a thousandths to a thousandths and a half, sometimes five thousandths. But the diamond tip checker that I'm checking with will just punch right through that, no problem. Could it throw it off a point? Maybe. But don't think that just because the thing is nitrided, that means that everything's 70 Rockwell. Trust me, you would not want a barrel that's 70 Rockwell. I don't know for a fact, but I would imagine since the barrels do this when they shoot, if you ever seen them in slow motion, 70 Rockwell, I think it would probably shatter. I might be wrong, but maybe somebody would do it someday and it would be kind of cool to watch. A little dangerous, but whatever. My thoughts are a century is they're, they're improving. I can tell they are improving. We're doing these videos to kind of give them free testing. This doesn't cost them a thing. 
But people on the internet will look at something like this and go, well, that's just a big pile of crap. They're trying. They're doing, <laughs> they're going in the right direction. They're just not all the way to where they need to be. But they're getting there. They have, are making improvements.